Hey guys, we're playing Terra Mystica today on Board Game Arena. I really hope that this video can help you kind of get a grasp on the game. It's a little bit of an older one, but it's personally one of my favorites. It's an exceptional engine building game. It's really difficult to get started though. There's a lot going on. And in Board Game Arena, there's, <laughs> it's so intimidating. There's some people who are amazingly good. Like they've mastered this game. Like other people have mastered chess kind of good. So I hope you can join me, and I hope we do at least fairly well here. Let's see how it goes. Oh, goody, I'm up to pick factions. So looking at the round scoring, nothing stands out to me except for maybe needing to get a lot of fire. But the Chaos Magicians have already been taken, which means the races kind of align to fire are already gone here. Let's take a look at what areas of terraforming we're not really competing too much with. We have the wasteland, sandstorm, mountains. Let's see. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a lot of green or mountains or wetlands. So I wouldn't be competing a lot with that. There's, there's a little bit of mountains over here on Chaos Magicians. So I think if I go with Orin or the Witches, I won't have too much competition on land to grow towards. Now, one thing with Orin is that they want to get their stronghold a little bit earlier than the scoring would suggest. Because the earlier you get it, the more of a benefit you get from it. And I also know that they're not considered one of the best factions in the game. Yeah, let's go ahead and give it a go. It'll be a little bit of a challenge for us, but I think we can do well. One of the things I really like to do is to make sure that I look at under each of these buildings to see if there's anything exceptional about the faction. Swarmlings stands out as, a, as an extreme where all of their buildings cost way more than the others. It, oh, this is actually a really good stronghold with the one times favor token. And then you get the ability to move up on one of the tracks twice, which is really nice. Now, obviously, I would want to get this the sooner the better because it's a once per turn thing. I think holding off until round three won't be too bad. Obviously, the sooner the better, but I don't think it's one of those factions where you really want to get this out turn one because it completely changes your game. Ooh, time to put down our first dwelling. So we're looking at mountains and wetlands as the easiest place for us to terraform. So looking at the board, because you're competing for terraforming kind of counterintuitively, starting next to neighbors is really good. And right here the, is a common spot for Darklings to build two towns. So I can kind of build here and then build straight down, like right between his two towns, and it would be mutually beneficial. So I'm going to go ahead and go with that. For our second dwelling, probably the safest place for us is the middle of the map area here. I really like the connection of those two. The Chaos Magicians may place here. I could bridge here and then... I could do a water bridge here to get longest road. So that's working out well. Yeah, I like this. And there's also a lot of terraforming potential in this area. Let me go ahead and start. Um, let's go with here. That'll be next to the Chaos Magicians if they place there and get us some extra power. Oh, so, okay. They do compete a little bit for the dirt tiles and may push into a little bit on the Darklings, but it works overall for me. Oh, okay. Darklings placing pretty much where I expected. I was a little worried they might not because of the competition there. But, I mean, really, you get power for being next to someone anyhow, so everyone's really just a bunch of friends. Oh, yes, I'm first to choose bonus tile. This is fantastic. I really like the free spade because that'll get me two points round one. And I really want to head off the Chaos Magicians and try to beat them to this land area, especially that mountain piece there. So choosing the priest turn one for Chaos Magicians is a little weird. They typically go for temples pretty quick anyhow. So the only thing I can think of is that they're looking to grab one of the cult tracks and move up that really fast. But let's see. Oh, good. 
I really like where I am right now. I'm, I feel like I'm getting, going to get a decent amount of power turn one from Darkling's building next to me. Oh, there it is. That's why he got that priest. Moving up on the brown track gives you an extra gold at the end of this round. So it gives him three gold. And I guess he does cross the gate for one power. Personally, not my choice of what I would have chose for bonus tiles. But maybe he has something else going on. I don't know. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. They both really motivate me to make more videos and also tell me what kind of content you guys are looking for. Oh, actually it works out pretty well that the Chaos Magicians played the Priest here because that stalls out a turn. And I'm gonna get a lot of benefit from going ahead and building a dwelling here because the Chaos Magicians are left with two choices. They can either upgrade their core building or they can expand out into the mountain tile. And either way they go, I get power for it excellent everything is proceeding as i have foreseen okay so i can either upgrade over here next to the chaos musicians or upgrade next to the darklings it really depends i'm kind of in a race to go and build in this direction with the darklings but i'm also in a race to build in this direction with the chaos magicians I'm going to go ahead and gamble that the Darkling is going to do more upgrading and expanding. We'll see if that pays out. Oh shoot, it looks like I should have expanded towards the Chaos Magicians. It would have given me a little extra power. Oh wow, he just paid full price for that trading post. So I really want this space here and this space here before either one of them. And I could take this double shovel, but I think that would put me down to like seven power. I, so I'd have to give up too much for it. I don't think red's going to be able to beat me there. So I, I could go ahead and build a temple here. In my past games, I've really underestimated the abilities of the temples. And um, if anything, just getting some extra income would be nice. So yeah, let me build a, a temple here. I'm going to go ahead and grab this favorite tile for the worker and power each round. Moving up on the earth track will also give me $2 at the end of the round, which is nice. And if I get the priest each round, I can start moving up for those bonuses in the end of the future rounds. Yikes. So Chaos Magicians are in a difficult position here. They chose that tile. I don't think they get any benefit from the shipping. I guess they could technically jump the water, but at this point, why would they? The extra power is kind of nice, but in a four-player game, there's a real race in order to get those center really nice actions for power. So not ideal for him to have to pass so early. Oh, so I was really hoping to pick up some more power this round so I could fuel the double shovel. I really want to grab or head off this where red wants to go. It looks like ugh, the Darkings also have the bonus tile that I would like next round. Backup would be here for the extra power and the worker. I could go ahead and do the power action to double spade, but it would put me down to seven power, which is really bad, especially this early in the game. It's good to get rid of some of them because then your bowl cycles a little faster, but seven is a bit extreme. My concern is if I'm doing my math right, Red's going to take this double shovel from me next round if I don't do it now. And that would really block off a really great route for me. So let me go ahead and do the double shovel here to terraform the mountains into my terrain and kind of head him off. Because then that builds into another green space that I can build into. And next round, I even have the ability to get two extra points for each dwelling that I build. And as much as I would like to hold off on building this dwelling for the extra two points next round, I can't because red will end up terraforming that green back to wasteland potentially, and it would be all for naught. Okay, so we got everything done that we need to get done, and I'm gonna go ahead and pass here. 
yeah, we can pass. So I'd really like to pick up this for the extra money going into next round. I do need that. On the other hand, I could get this tile, which would give me the seven money here, assuming I can be first to get that. I think it's a little more advantageous for me to get this tile, though. It'll give me a couple extra points, and it guarantees the three money. Oh, a turn one, grab the red three track. I mean, it's pretty good because the tiles later on, there's two of them associated with red. Like I said in the beginning, getting really high up on that red track can be really advantageous. This also really works out well for us because it gives us an opportunity to build around him more, potentially, and get more power as he builds up. So as I look around, I'd really like to get this three spot, but I also don't want the Darklings to be somehow taking this grassland from me. I don't know why they would connect the town. This three spot would get me a priest at the end of the round. I think I would be more inclined to be losing this spot potentially. So let me go ahead and build there. I don't know why the Darklings would connect those because then that would become one town and they wouldn't, they would really hurt their chances of getting two or even three turn, like towns this game. But just in case. Oh, Chaos Magician is building next to me. I probably should have foreseen that coming and built another dwelling over there to pick up some extra power would have been nice. Huzzah! We didn't lose our three spot, so let's not push our luck again. Let's go ahead and take this. That way we'll get up on four, and at the end of the round, we'll get an extra priest. Oh, so I don't like to see the Darklings building out of that direction. I would have liked to build out more over there myself, because then I collect power as he moves out. So I don't want Darklings to grab the town there. Uh, I don't think they're going to. I, I don't think they want to connect those. So let me go ahead and build out here because the Chaos Magicians are moving in that direction and I kind of want to head them off and get power as they grow. And so the Darklings are currently beating me and kind of like the race to expand which I don't really like because it means I'm going to be feeding them a bunch of power. So I think I'm going to go ahead and pass uh, to get this bonus tile here. The reason being, in order to build up more, I would have to start spending workers, and I don't want to do that. We also don't have the seven money tile, so really this tile gives you the most money in this game. The other thing is, if I can get on to... The two track for the red, I could use this special action in order to potentially pass the gate there, or at least help me towards the end of round objectives towards red. Oh, nice. So the Chaos Magicians end up using that shipping that I didn't expect them to use. The Chaos Magicians are actually my, my favorite faction, which is probably why I'm focusing so much on them. I really am trying to learn or see how that they're playing so that I myself can get better. Looking at how much the fire track is needed coming up, I think people are going to rush to this location. So let me go ahead and plop down a priest here while I still can, because all the other players have a decent amount of priests. Oh, that's fantastic. That gets me the one power that I need in order to shovel here with the single shovel. I'd actually really like to pick up this last spot with the priest, but I don't want to end up losing out on the shovel. So let me go ahead and do that first. Okay, so I'd still really like to get this spot with the priest here, but let's see. Looking over here at the red player, I'd like to build Stronghold, and if I go, well, I could also get the money. 
if I build the stronghold here, I would end up getting a lot more upgrade potential from this spot. And so, yeah, I think I should go ahead and do the trading post and start building the stronghold so that as he builds, I get more and more power. The other thing I'm considering is picking up shipping this round. I could hop here and I wouldn't be forced to pick up the bonus tile. And then that could potentially get me three towns at the end of the game, which would be a really nice objective. Oh darn, so Red's passed this turn already, so I'm not going to get any more power from him. I could do the Priest here, which would give me one more. It wouldn't give me enough to get to get this 7 money action, which is unfortunate. Uh, I do have 4 Priests, so I can definitely still throw more down onto the track. You kind of lose them forever once you put them there, so you have to be mindful of putting too many down, or you may not be able to generate any more. Yeah, let me go ahead and put down my priest here, and that'll move me up. If anything, it'll get me some extra end of round bonuses. Okay, so we're gonna use our one here to move up on the fire track one. That'll get us to six, no, five. And then we're gonna use this here to move up to, oh, I have to build it first. That might be useful. Oh. Uh, Oh, almost forgot about my favorite tile. So let me go ahead and build up the extra points for dwellings and then another temple for the extra points for trading post eventually. The reason being is that next round's bonus is dwelling, so I hope to build a lot of them. One, two, three, potentially. All right, next up, we're going to use this to move up on the fire track. Two more. That gets us pretty high up there. And let's go ahead and get the money here while we can. We're going to need that going into next round. Um, I actually have a decent amount of money. I mean, it's not great, but it's decent. Uh, so let's go ahead and pass. Uh, let's, let's grab the shipping here because I'm hoping to hop the river here into my third town. I fall into this trap a little bit where I try to I get a little overly ambitious and try to build too many towns and it just doesn't always pan out for me. Oh, I'm really glad I grabbed the money while I could. That went really fast. Okay, so I think I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, let me burn up power for this spade. That's super not ideal because that would put me down to one, two, three, four, five, six power which is not great, but I don't want someone taking this spade from me, so it's now or never. The other reason is it would get me this mountain tile, which then opens me up into another green tile that I can build. And this round, I'm gonna get four points for each dwelling that I make. So I think it's pretty important. <laughs> this is a tough decision for me. Uh, I, I can get a lot of power here, but I lose three victory points. And I'm not really generating a lot anyhow. And because that just became a town, I'm not going to get much more from it. So let me go ahead and do this. I have a serious weakness for that button. Okay, so I definitely want to build in these two areas. I, I, I could see if someone builds here first. I might as well go ahead and build this one. It seems to be the least risk. That way I can adapt. If something happens, I don't know, probably overthinking things. So end of round, I'm going to end up gaining eight power. So I don't, I don't think this is going to be worth it, but man, that, that, that button's my weakness. Again, I get, I get another chance. Oh man, that it might actually be worth it. Yeah, let me take this. Because we don't have that seven money tile, let me go ahead and convert all my power into money. I'm, I should be getting it all back or most back at the end of the round. 
and this should help compensate for the lack of money. Let me go ahead and build a dwelling here. Otherwise, we'd waste that one shipping we grab and potentially lose the chance of getting our third town. Oh, Red locking out the fire track. Makes sense. He is the Chaos Magicians. One low-key benefit of those actions is that you can stall out and wait for people to pass if they have some of the bonus tiles you really like. Okay, so if I go ahead and move up two on the fire track, that would get me nine and four extra power at the end of the round. So that's pretty good. It's also kind of like a low key stall because I really want the bonus tile that yellow is sitting on over here. Because going into the next round, that's a pretty healthy amount of points for the number of dwellings that I have. I may even be able to max it out. Okay, no reason to delay. Let's go ahead and pass here and grab the points for dwellings. As much as I love getting power, I'm going to have to pass on this one because I'm going to end up getting uh, 11, 3 for myself, and then 8 for end of round bonuses. So that's all but one power. So it'd be a huge waste. Oh, wow. Yeah, the money got taken really quickly this round. Unfortunately, I also need a lot of money myself in order to get the Sanctuary. But I also want to double shovel. So let me go ahead and I'm going to upgrade the trading post here. And hopefully by the time it gets back to me, I'll pick up a power from somewhere. So I really want to build my sanctuary and I see, I want to convert the two power here into money and just do the single spade. That way I can convert here, build the dwelling and still get my sanctuary this round for the bonus five points. The other thing I'm noticing is that the towns for money, like the, you get extra money when you build a town are all gone. This is an incredibly money starved game. Uh, you know, without without the extra money from the towns, I'm going to have a really hard time building the sanctuary, getting the third town, and doing shipping, because I'm going to need three shipping in order to get Longest Road. Okay, so I don't think all three of these slots are going to get taken anytime soon, and I do want to get that end of round bonus for the extra worker. Let me go ahead and upgrade this to a... Uh, hold on. I actually need five money so i need to get three more uh so two power and would get me four so i need to turn one worker into a bunny which is really not ideal but that gives me enough to upgrade this into a temple okay so i really want the bonus points for trading post created because next round I'm going to get bonus points for making trading posts anyhow. So six points per trading post is going to be fantastic. So I'm really desperate for money and really the only way of me really getting it is getting power. And if I have any chance of finishing off that third town and getting the shipping that I need, I, I'm going to need a lot of money. Ooh, yeah. So if Red is trying to go for a second town and builds closer to me, that'll help me out a lot because that'll discount my training post. So this round, I want to build my sanctuary. I could convert workers into money and go ahead and do it now. Uh, long term, building a town here. But I prefer to get some power and do that instead. If I go here, end of round, it'll give me an extra worker, which is nice. And it'll also serve as an excellent stall because no one else is really past this point. So there's a good chance someone will do something which will get me a little bit of power. I'm going to go ahead and use this ability to move up on air. That'll give me an extra worker right at the end of the round. It's also going to push me past one of the gates, which will get me some power. And that means I'll have to pay a little bit less for this sanctuary. 
Ooh, I really like seeing that because that means the next trading post that I need to build for that town is going to be even cheaper. Uh, I, although I am a little concerned that it may take that tile, but that seems unlikely. Okay, so in order to build the sanctuary, I need some money. So let's take all the power that I can and turn that into money. I'm still lacking four, so I need to turn four workers into more money. Uh, sorry, selling my poor workers. It seems so wrong. So let's build the sanctuary. <laughs> so I'm actually really not sure what to get here. I could get the power here, which would get me money. And I certainly need the money. I could get this, which... See, this would only give me the four points once. Or, yeah, once. And it wouldn't even really pass me up to get that extra end of round criteria. So, I mean, points are points. Oh, don't take that trading postcard. Don't take the card. Ah, man. Oh. Maybe it was better for me to pass last, last round. Um, it's okay. Let's see what else we got here. I do need the money really bad. And this would probably let me pass at least one of the gates. Go ahead and get that has the most money on it. That's what I'm gonna severely be lacking next round. <laughs> so if I'm doing the math right, I need 24 money to upgrade my shipping to where I need it and to finish out my towns. Yeah, sure, uh, we can do this. So I really doubt it happens, but if I go here, I should be able to get enough power to sacrifice the rest of my power and get the seven money. But I think all the other players are in the same boat as I am where they really want money as well. <laughs> yep, there it goes. Especially in a four slash five player game, those power actions in the middle get taken pretty pretty quickly. And in this one, we're particularly money starved because we don't have that seven bonus tile. Um, the highest one we have is four. Okay, so I do need to get a double shovel in order to finish out my third town. If I can do... Double shovel there. Gate pass here would get me two. Gate pass here would get me two. I could do a priest and then maybe get two back in order to still get my shipping upgrades. But I think it's such a long shot that I'm going to be able to get the third town and longest road through shipping. I don't think I'm going to be able to get the money. Uh, before I use this priest, let me do the one here on air. Just in case by some miracle, I get tons of builds next to me. I'll get money through that way and then get to hold on to my priest. I feel like it's a little safer. <laughs> I'm actually quite embarrassed because the Orans are supposed to be really good at getting high up on those cult tracks. And the Chaos Magicians are kind of wiping the floor with me here. I mean, they are leading on three out of the four to me. I'm only higher with them on water, which is thematically kind of kind of nice because you know water is opposite to fire. So okay, so ideally I kind of want to do a stall here to hope someone builds next to me for that last power to move over, and then that gives me double shovels. So let me go ahead and build. Let's see. I think darklings are kind of the worst off in points. So yeah, let me build the town next to them and help them out a little bit.
Okay, so let's grab the priest tile here. And I don't really think it matters what terrain space to put it on. I wonder why I even bothers to ask. You have no priest in your supply. Oh. Oh, bugger. Uh, do you guys remember earlier where I said you had a limited supply of, of priest? Uh, well, I've made a mistake. So, yeah, let me go with the two workers instead. If anything, that'll get me money. No oh, bugger. Looks like we lost our chance to get the two on the earth track. That's okay. The water is a little more comp Oh, I'd have to pass the three gate. Ah. <laughs> Man, I just lost the spot there. It's, it's okay. Okay, so here's where my headspace is at. And I need to move power over in order to build a trading post and found a town. And I want to pull over just enough so that I have a little bit left. Because the only real good tile for towns left is the move eight power over so if i go ahead and do this this will move over one three four five six seven eight and leave me one left in the bowl so if someone builds next to me i get a free power um yeah i think that'll work out well because that moves over enough power for me to get more money that i need to found more towns and it leaves me with the one power for free in case someone builds next to me. Yeah, this is good. Good, good. No one else built anything this round. I need the power for later. I need the power for money. Good. Uh, double shovel here. Confirm. And I don't see a reason to delay building a dwelling, so let's go ahead. If I build the two trading posts here, that is 10 workers effectively converting them into money for trading posts. And then that'll get me my third town. Then I'll have to somehow come up with eight money to get my shipping upgraded enough to get longest road, which is gonna be really difficult to do. Let me go ahead and convert those workers into money, which I, it really, really disturbs me as to how that actually works out. And actually, let me go ahead and make the trading post here. There's a higher chance of him upgrading that building than there is this building. So I may be able to irk out some more power. Okay, so that gives me a chance to get a little bit of power. I'm not really sure if it's going to be worth it or not. Maybe I can upgrade my shovels or something along those lines to get some extra points. Because at this, at this point, I don't think I'm going to be able to get Longest Road. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. If anything, I'll just be down one point. It'll be fine. So if I move up the tracks here, that may unlock some additional power. And it'll also give me another chance to stall to see if people around me will build. It looks like... It looks like red has a decent amount of resources. So I think it's a long shot as to whether or not I'm going to get enough power to get like some extra workers or money or something like that to get more shovels, but we shall see. Ugh. So that'll get me three, you know, try as I might. Realistically, I think I'm just going to lose victory points in doing this. I don't think I'm going to get any benefit from it. So I think I should just decline. I hate hitting that click the decline button for the power. <laughs> I, I really want all the power. Okay, so I need to use my priest now, or when I get a town, I'll, I'll get wasted. because, Or the priest will get wasted. <laughs> because... 
I won't have a priest to pull from to supply. And this will pull me ahead a little bit on the water track, which will give me a couple extra points. Uh, I want to do something else. Hitting that decline button is the bane of my existence. I don't, I want to find something to do with it, but I, I don't think there's anything worth losing the two points for. All right, so I need to upgrade this to a trading post because it's six points and then finishes out my town. I need to do some conversions. Let me get power first. Uh, workers, okay. I really hope someone chimes in down below and it's like, hey, you missed this one thing. And if you did this, you would have got the shipping. Because on one hand, it would really irk me to know that I missed it. But on the other hand, I feel like I'm so close. There was just one thing that I missed that could have gotten me longest road and that's 18 points. Oh, dang it, Red. Why are you tying me? Um, so if I'm doing my math right, I think I'm lacking one coin in order to upgrade my shovels for six points. Is there anything else I can do to make up for that? Nope. Okay, let me go ahead and do priest. Uh, silly red. Yeah, he has no more priest left. So yeah, let me use my priest there because I don't think there's anything he can do to climb back up on that. So I could upgrade my shipping one, which would give me two points, but it'd be kind of a wash because those eight workers would turn into eight money, which is end of the game. Every three coins is worth a point. So I don't really see too much of a point. I could break the tie here and that would potentially move me from four points to eight if I'm mathing correctly. So oh, looks like everyone's passed. So we're moving into final scoring. I did pretty well on the tracks, Cut not as well as maybe Orin should have done. The Chaos Magicians put up one heck of a fight there. So Chaos Magicians are probably my favorite faction to play as. You get those two times favorite tiles, which are amazing, but you have a, a problem of getting stuck into a corner. And admittedly, I really, really stuck him in a corner here, and he did a great job of getting out of it. It's such a fantastic player, I think. Really well done. With that said, I would appreciate if you uh, smash the like button. That's a thing that people say. And hit the subscribe button. Both of those things really help me make more videos like this, or at least know what it is you guys enjoy watching. So I know which direction to grow the channel in. Either way, I do appreciate you watching and I hope you enjoyed it, especially if you watched it this long. I don't know why you wouldn't have enjoyed it and watched it this long. Anyhow, see you guys. Bye.